And so I'm going to come back over to the Zoom screen. But let me just, uh, meeting is now streaming live. Okay, we're streaming live. <laughs> live on Facebook. Okay, Hello. guys. Hi, Scratchy Mauer of Updo and Hairstyle Education page. And today my guest live is Mary, is it Rondo or Rando? How do you say it? Rando. Rando. Okay, I know I spelled it wrong and I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> Mary Rando and Mary is an in-demand bridal hair artist who administers more than 50 weddings a year. She owns Mary Rando Hairstyling and Makeup Artistry and her team services local and regional destination bridal parties. Mary is in on, on, you're on an island. So Mary's on Marco Island in Florida, but she's from my neck of the woods. I'm in Connecticut. She's a Boston girl. Um, as a leader in her field, Mary brings her talents to fellow stylists as a coach, teaching the entire gamut of her wedding expertise. So stylists gain confidence with managing bridal hair and formal event styling. So Mary, I ran across you in the group. And I just found the shift that you took in um, location. There's a lot of thousands and thousands of stylists out there who go to school locally. And I mean, I went to school locally and then I went to the salon where my mom went and then I worked there and then, you know, so, but that doesn't have to be, we could have a two year, three year, five year plan where we can maybe decide that we are tired of New England or cold or wherever we are and uh, take take that jump to move somewhere exotic where you have one location, you the brides come to you, you're not traveling and packing your bag. You typically have the same kind of bride with the same similar hairstyles. And uh, so tell us how you got started in the industry and then we'll shift to how you got where you are. Yeah, sure. So um, I have always been exposed to the industry since I was little. My grandmother, she was director of emissions of a very prestigious skincare school up there. So as those um, students that she used to teach and get them signed up at the school, she had a lot of connections to them. So I was always going in and out of uh, salons and spas, and I was always exposed to very um, you know, high-end salons as well. So I decided early on in my age that I really didn't like school and I was more of a hands-on person. High school, um, I started working when I was 14. I worked at CVS um, and I just really loved that independence. And when I was a sophomore in high school, I decided I wanted to go to beauty school. I knew, um, well, actually my hairdresser that I was going to, he was very successful. I loved him. I loved the personality. I loved the atmosphere in um, the salon. And I was just like, this is for sure for me. And I did have um, a cousin in the salon. She was very successful. Um, so I just knew that it was a great industry to be in. Um, fast forward, I graduated high school, went to beauty school, um, had the best time of my life. Legit. Like I didn't know school could be that fun, to be honest. And um, I just went from there. Um, my grandmother, she's very well respected in the industry. And she always told me, you know, when I first started, if you want to be the best, you have to train by the best. Um, I worked in five star into coffee or salons um, and underneath these unbelievably talented stylists. Like I was just in awe when I first started. So and of course, I got a lot of um, advice from them over the years. I was an apprentice for three years um, up in Boston. Um, I'm not sure of the licensing now. I haven't been there for a while, but it's probably the same where you have to apprentice under um, someone that has been doing hair more than two years. There's two different licenses. So I had to um, apprentice, but also I enjoyed it. I um, All the stylists that I was working with, there's a few of them that I still am in contact with. and um, I, you know, they're my mentors and that's always what I've picked up. And I still talk to them if I need a little something and I'll call them and ask them if, you know, what do you think of this? And, um, I always just value and, um, their advice they gave me because it really helped shape who I am today. Um, 
so again, fast forward after a couple of salons I worked in, I finally got behind the chair, um, had almost a full-time clientele. Um, at the time there were some family issues going on with, um, health reasons. My father got really sick. Um, and he just decided he wanted to go, um, move down North. I mean, South <laughs> where I am now. And my grandmother who is in the industry, she is, um, they, my grandparents had a condo here. So I always would be vacationing down here in Marco Island and they retired here. And, uh, my parents knew eventually they were going to retire here. And I was like, you know, I always am very close with my family. Um, in my family, my extended family, especially, we're a huge Italian Irish family and all born within the same towns, either that mm -hmm. town or the next one over, you know, just very, very close family. Um, that's on my father's side. So my mother's side is the grand, the grandparents who've had a condo down in Marco Island. Um, so I, they decided to move down here and I moved down here. And that is what is so amazing about our industry is that we can go anywhere in the world and be successful, regardless if you're behind the chair, you're a manager working for a company, you always will have a job and you, whatever you put into it, you're going to get out of. I think that's a good point that, um, cause I didn't, I didn't know this other part of your story that the years with intercoffier and the idea of apprenticing and, and some, you know, I see it in the Facebook groups, like I want to just start working or I want to get my own suite or I want to work from home. And, and I, it, because this is a, a, a craft, this isn't like a, a, a degree that's in our head. This is a degree that's in our hands and it's people and experience, the experience of people and experience getting feedback, right? When you're an apprentice, I apprenticed Probably for a year and a half, we we just did blowouts and color application and, and wrapped perms. Right. The other people did all the haircuts and the other people made the formulas. And but those years are so crucial to, to learning and, and not just your craft, but yourself. Like, who do you want to be like? Who in your salon right. is like nasty? And you're like, oh, I don't feel like that. Or the person that you aspire to become or. And then all the, um, yeah, so, so that, that, uh, that time to invest in your career, um, what did you learn about yourself during those apprentice years? Just like you said, who I want to be and who I don't want to be. Okay. Um, and like I said, like with that being said, I, realized and especially working in all these salons what type of a salon i want to work at what type of salon i don't want to work at and um i am a hundred percent believer of an apprentice because you know the nowadays the students that are coming out of the school school doesn't really teach them real life situations they don't teach them okay you know here's all your skills then what like they don't teach you, okay, you should be apprenticing under people because you, honestly, you don't know anything that you, that when you get out of school, you really don't. Um, and it's kind of like, if you think of it as like a doctor a little bit, like they get a little bit more hands-on or they get a little bit more knowledge, the more hands-on they get. And, yes. um, you know, I am, I, when I was apprenticing, I eventually built up, um, I actually created a apprenticing program where um, I helped all the stylists coming out of school and they would sign up or they would work at the salon. And then I would um, just kind of guide them. And I set up like a program where, okay, you know, this is what our duties are. This is what we have to do. And when I was an apprentice, I was someone's also personal assistant. I mean, I was working in a salon with 12 plus stylists fully booked from eight o'clock to seven 30 at night, you know, every 15 minutes, like it was a high trafficked salon. Um, and so a couple of the stylists that I was working with, I always made sure that, you know, they were, all the stylists were taken care of and that was organizing the salon. And it really taught me salon management, um, of how a salon is properly run of the inventory, um, you know, keeping the stylist happy, the front desk, making sure the, the salon flowed the right way from when a client walks in to when they leave, you know, how they're treated. And that's pretty much how. I also took it as a learning experience. It's like, okay, if I was a client, how would I be treated? 
And that also flows into pretty much anything I do in my life. Like, you know, I treat others the way that I want to be treated. And of course with bridal, for sure. Like I treat my brides the way that I want to be treated. I think that's, that's, there's so much wisdom in you. And I think you're real, you are fortunate to have your grandma and have exposure to those high end salons. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, I, yeah. Cause like I didn't back in, well, back in the eighties, there wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. the internet and, and cool. I had no clue like that there was such a thing. Honestly, I didn't know there was such a thing as different level salons until I was probably in my career, well, it was 2000. So from 1980 to 2000, in 2000, I stepped up into a high-end salon and these girls were pulling in over 100K a year. Oh yeah. And that's 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I guess I really want people to understand that to, to have an open mind and to reach out in the industry. Anyone can reach out right. to you, have mm -hmm. a conversation, you're, I know you're, you would be totally open for that. Mm -hmm. oh, sure. I love, I love coaching. I love educating. And I am in the midst of working out um, a coaching program online. Um, it should be coming out maybe before the summertime. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Now, now that's my husband's computer on the other side of the office ringing. I don't know if people can hear that, but I'm sorry about, I'm still, my laptop has been out for repair three times. And now I'm on my husband's um, office manager's computer. And now his computer's ringing. Hopefully it won't ring again. I'll cut this part out in the YouTube video. Um, yeah, so that is huge. That apprenticing and having that right mindset and having those bigger dreams. Right. Um, too many people come into this industry and they get disappointed because right. things don't happen and you need to make things happen. Think you need to make things happen. Right. And I think when, so what led you to bridal specifically? <laughs> so, okay. I was working in Boston, working in a salon. Um, I was actually working in a salon. The last one I was at before I moved down here was actually on a high traffic to college town. Um, and they always had like, you know, homecomings, like proms, formal events. So that's when I really started getting into formal event styling. And I did do a bunch of weddings. So for instance, I would do like four, maybe four year, if that, on top of like the proms and whatnot. And then now when I moved down, so when I moved here, I started working um, in a, um, five-star resort. It's now called the JW Marriott here on the Island. And I was like, I'm never doing weddings. Like, cause you know, up in Boston, people are a little bit more cutthroat to be honest. Like, you know, they, you get a little beating up there. Um, you know, if it's not the clients, it's the stylist and you have to have a backbone in this industry. Um, and so when I moved down here, I was like, Nope, no weddings, not doing it. They're like, yeah, okay. So then, um, long story short, I pretty much got thrown into it and I love it. Like, love it. And I've always loved the wedding industry. And I thought I would be maybe like a planner if I wasn't a hairstylist. So now I have the two, I got hair that I love doing. And then I also have the wedding planning. And I mean, when I was working at the Marriott, we were doing about a hundred a year, easily, easily hundred. We do like 25 to 30 a month, wow. um, weddings, two in a day, three in a day. Um, it was just very, and very, a lot of weddings. And then when I got there and, um, it was just a, I loved working there. Like literally it was my home, like legit could not like think about ever leaving that place. And, um, I, when I first got there, they had all these brides and there wasn't really like a system of how to manage them. So like, say for instance, if a bride called in, then what now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go through a, first of all, they probably went through five or six people to get to me now. And when I say me, I'm just a stylist and the salon that I actually worked at or under or for, um, we, they leased from the Marriott. So it was not a Marriott salon. Um, it was a subcontracted. So that 
I just want to put that on the open that I was never like employed by the Marriott. Um, so, you know, there wasn't a system when they got to me and, you know, th going back to how I would want to be treated if I was a bride. Okay. I want to make sure that whoever's taking my information that, you know, they keep it and, you know, they do X, Y, and Z with it. And so they would call me, I'd have five or six people, five to 10, five to 20 sometimes. And um, I would have to coordinate with the rest of the stylist in um, the salon. And at that particular time, I was pretty much the only full-time hairstylist. And then um, I was coordinating with all the other stylists, calling them in to come and cover between makeup artists and um, hairstylists to come in and work these weddings. Um, and then when I also was there to coordinating, I would also upsell or cross sell with the nail salon and um the uh, spa and also any other activities like yoga if they want to do yoga like i always just was trying to promote and i wasn't really doing that because i wasn't getting any commission off of that i wasn't going to pay to you know do or book any of the other services besides hair and makeup but um, I just took it upon myself to do that. And it just really worked out well. And the brides loved it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a few directions I can go there. And specifically, um, sometimes people think, how did that person get to where they are? And we, anyone who has gotten anywhere in their career does take on stuff that's not in their job description because it's a character issue. And when you show up that way, when they talk about manifesting your life or karma or whatever those words are, anytime that you go over and above, it, it's for you, you know, it's for your job, but it's also for you because right. you're showing up a thousand percent mm -hmm. as, as who you are. And, and it's going to get noticed and it's going to get reciprocated and it's going to continue to move you in a direction mm -hmm. so so that's that was a really good point for sure and the other aspects that you learn thrown into the salon and a marriott and all those phone calls and and the ability to organize and systems systems are huge and sometimes i think as artists people think a system is constricting but I'm, I just, I'm about to launch my course called Updo System. Mm -hmm. and, and systems give you a track, but within the track, you have lots of artistic freedom. And so you, you when a bride calls, and for anyone, say, who's a sweet stylist, and she's got her phone, she doesn't have a system for capturing that bride's information and remembering everything about that bride a year and a half or two years out for when her wedding is, that's that's so important that, that, that there's a system behind it. And the idea that when there's not a system, and I think another thing I wanted to mention too, so say you're a stylist and you're in a salon and you want to do more updos, and I've seen this in the group, but the owner's not going along with it. As the stylist, you can say to the owner, let me run a bridal department. Let me talk to Mary. Let me buy Gretchen's updo book. Like I want to create a system in the salon so that we can do more weddings and I could build a team. And, right. and people don't understand that bridal work, especially in a salon, keeps the salon young. And it, it keeps, there's a lot of upselling that can happen. Um, and so anyways, that's my little speech on systems <laughs> that, that I'm so glad you mentioned that yeah. word. Well, the um, thing, as you were saying, um, there's just, so when I, first thing, when I was doing all this coordinating, I did it because I wanted to, not because I was asked to do it. And as I was doing that, this is very important for anyone in the industry or any industry. When you start having these personal connections with all the other vendors, so when I was working at the Marriott, I was also coordinating with all the other coordinators that when I say coordinators, they're the ones that would get the bridal the, or the bride and the groom, and they would start kind of coordinating around um, setting up their wedding. So I've developed these great relationships with everyone around the hotel. 
And they knew, okay, you know, if there's someone's getting married, they're going to walk them down to me and I'm going to meet them, be very personable with them. Um, and just guide them through and just keep on being not, and I always consider myself not a robot. I'm not a corporate person. I am who I am and that's that. And um, I treat them with how, like I said, I want to be treated like a real person, not someone that is like, you know, being coached or told what to say. So with the networking, um, with these brides, I also networked with all the photographers. So, so even to this day, I still am in contact with all the photographers. I have like probably a list of so many photographers, never mind the photographers, the florists, um, and also um, cake or bakers, um, venues too. I just have a list of all my vendors and we always are kind of marketing for each other. So for instance, a photographer, they'll send me their pictures and I can post them on my social media. I don't even have to ask for some of these from my, um, from the photographers, they just give them to me and it's just amazing. Um, and that really helps. And um, so networking is huge as well. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, networking is, it, it's, I, there was two women in the shop where I worked after I closed my salon, they, they owned a bridal shop. I did both their hair. And I'm like, can I come in and do an open house in your bridal salon? You know, I'll just show up and I'll bring a couple models and then I'll do some hairstyles and then I'll put your head pieces in the hairstyles and show the brides where they should put their veil and what hairstyle works with what headpiece. And, and that's just the local hairdresser going to the local bridal shop and networking. And it, it's, it can be scary at first, but it's, it's the, the benefits are huge. And it's the same with photographers and joining bridal. Um, there's, there's bridal groups. If anyone Googles wherever they're at, there's, there's bridal groups they can join and meet other photographers and, right. and vendors and stuff. So, um, now talking about, so say, so let's talk to the young stylist who is like, I don't want to be in my small hometown. I don't want to, um, you know, just stand behind the chair where, where I know everybody and everyone I went to high school with is coming in and, and I don't want to see their lives anymore. <laughs> I, want to, I want to move on. I want my own life. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if they were to have a plan like a two-year plan three-year plan five-year plan whatever maybe jump an apprentice in um a nicer salon in the area or maybe even set their sights on moving so say say someone wanted to come down to florida where you are i mean you've got a big team and um what is kind of like the first thing you would tell a young stylist to think about to get her mindset to maybe creating her own dream career on an island or somewhere else? Well, when I first started having the idea that I wanted to move, I started looking into the salons, Googling, thankfully for um, the internet. That was just, I mean, easy for me to do it. But I started Googling, you know, other sal our salons in the area, Marco Island, Naples, um, you know, even Fort Myers, I just was looking, 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 looking. And so I was like, okay, I had about 10 of them. I wanted to go in and, um, uh, interview at, take a peek at, I did actually some mystery shopping. Um, that's all, that's one of my favorites is just to go in and see how you're treated because then I know the salon atmosphere and how, you know, what vibe I get from them be, before even introducing myself that I possibly would want to work there. Um, that way I could really understand if this would be a good fit for me. And some people just automatically assume, oh, this is a salon. It's going to pay well. I'm going to, you know, it's a great environment. Let me just go in there and just suck it up and I'll just work there. Um, but then they realize like, it's not a good fit. And I, just because like, if you're working in a high-end salon does not mean that it's a good fit and you're going to be making all this money. No, you got to actually enjoy where you work and who you work for and the people that are there. So you really have to take the time to really research the salons and go and mystery shop. 
Um, fortunately, I was able to save up a little bit of money before I moved. Um, and I did when I moved down here, um, I moved in with my grandparents for a little bit. And um, within two months, you know, I moved out, was renting a house because um, I landed the job at the Marriott. And that would be, um, and I felt it was just the owner. She was very welcoming. Um, and also everyone at um, the spa. It was a, a 10,000 square foot spa. Oh, it's huge. 24 treatment rooms. Um, it's a huge spa. And to be honest, that's where I, when I used to, when I would vacation down here, I would go to that spa. So I obviously had that on the top of my priority to see if they would be hiring um, and what I needed to do to get in there. Um, and fortunately it worked out and I started working there, but um, that would be the most important thing was to research salons and mystery shop to see which ones were, um, were gonna be a good fit for you. That's a really, I love that. I love that mystery shop. I, I kind of have mentioned that before to, um, to, to even to brides to go into a salon and mystery yes. shop for herself, for her wedding. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's cool. I'm going to put that in the tagline when I redo this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's, we got to get the dollar signs out of our, like the dollars will come. Right. But if you're chasing the dollar, Mm -hmm. You're going to be forever chasing the dollar because you're not developing. You're not finding out who you are. Um, you're not really seeing where you're a good fit or not. If your mind is always on the dollars and, and a lot of people get caught up in that and, um, and that the money will come. It really, it does. Yeah. Um, and that's, um, you know, what I do have to say to every single day. And I'm very fortunate to say this. I wake up and if I'm working, then I'm excited to go to work. I have literally the best clientele and I'm bragging, but it's the truth. I have the best clientele. I'm like, oh, I'm seeing, um, you know, Sarah today or so-and-so. I'm like, yeah, let's go. And it's just, I am so blessed to be able to say that because not a lot of people can say that about their jobs. Like all of my friends, like that aren't in the industry are like, oh, I got to go to work. I have to do this. As of right now, I'm four days behind the chair, Tuesday through Friday. And then I have weddings. And if I don't, then I'm, I have a three day weekend. I have, you know, um, two day or whatever, but you know, as of right now behind the chair, I have, um, four days. I work four days. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it definitely is, um, you know, I, my goal was I want to work one day a week and make a week's pay mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I have kids and, you know, it, it worked out. You just come the weekends and, you know, you can do it. But, yes. um, so that I think, is there anything else that you wanted to say? I mean, it was so rich. You brought up <laughs> so much stuff. I didn't even, uh, expect. So that was amazing. Let me just take a breather, a head breather to think if there's any, anything. And I will say one other thing too, because I have also another cousin who is phenomenal with makeup. Her makeup she does on herself is absolutely amazing. And she is an esthetician um, and a nail tech, but she had two um, children and she decided that, you know, she's not going to work as a provider right now, as a service provider, she is doing a receptionist job at a salon. Um, but I've been telling her for years um, since she's had her children that just work a day or do a wedding a weekend and there, there's a week's of pay. Oh, and she's, you know, just really trying to figure out and I've been pushing her and I just really have told her like, if you, because of also child hair is an issue for her. So if you're trying to, um, you know, kind of get out of like a financial rut, just work a day of a weekend and do a wedding. That's it. Like legit, you can make so much money doing one wedding that you only have to work one day a week. And it's yeah. not one full day. It's a couple hours to right. be honest. So those couple hours, you know, either her uh, husband or, you know, a family member can take the kids. And I just really kind of push the bridal industry because you really don't need to be behind the chair full time and yeah. thank you for social media i mean social media has changed our industry like immensely so 
-hmm. with that, you can just hop on if you're not comfortable with how to do a specific technique on how to do an updo or a makeup application, just hop on and do that. And all these influencers that have on there, they've said that they've taken or just watched Instagram videos or YouTube videos. And, you know, thankfully for Gretchen, she's doing some uh, tutorials as well. So just really get your confidence up. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be coaching is how to get your confidence to you're able to be work one day a week for a couple hours. I think that is so true because it is a confidence thing. And if we're if we're limited to the paying client and we're limited to making someone happy, we come into the situation with so much anxiety. Um, it, you've got to get the mannequin heads and you've got to get people to work on. You've got to try things and you've got to gain that confidence. And then you're, you're, you're just going to blossom mm -hmm. and it takes a little planning to make some room in your schedule, but it's part of that goal setting. So it's good that you're going to help people out with that. Yes. I, I think another thing that you mentioned that I wanted to just reiterate on was um, for me as a clarity coach and working with people and personality types, because because we also have a, a mental health practice. And so I'm thankfully I get to actually attend with my husband to a lot of the seminars and stuff that he gets for education. So this personality bit. So some people might not have the personality to to go in and and want to run and manage but if they can find a well-run spot at a at a big name hotel or or find one wedding planner who's super busy in one a destination location where they can be that bridal person and they just show up and do hair. They don't have to collect the money. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do social media. They don't have to do anything. So you can become your own empire or you can yes. become a really, really good soldier for mm -hmm. an empire that's already running. Right. So knowing who you are and knowing where you fit, maybe you just love beachy hair and, and you mm -hmm. want easy, fast, half up, wispy stuff. Mm -hmm. And you just love the wedding day. And so you go and you might work at a place like that. And then you're going to connect with a wedding planner. You can connect with a photographer and you're going to, you know, you take steps and where the road turns kind of is like, I'm going here, but I didn't know I was going to be really good over here. I'm going here, but you know what? I'm better over here. So somebody might even become a really good assistant to a wedding planner and do hair on the side and get paid to be the planner's helper. Like just take a move out of what it is. If you hate what you're doing, start dreaming and make some steps, you know, right. and, and it's going to find you, your career won't find you. If you're sitting still, yes. you have to make steps, whether that's hiring a coach or getting on Google or mystery shopping, right? Mystery shop right where you are maybe and see what yes. it's like in a higher end salon. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you just want to step up to a new salon in your area and you don't want to move to an island. But the whole idea, you gave us so much information today. And I really, really appreciate your time and, and your expertise and your grandma. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's she's great. I love her. She um, owns her own skincare com uh, company and we have uh, skincare line. So we... She just loves educating. So I feel like that's where I get it from. And I feel like I'm a spitting image of my grandmother. So yeah, it, it, well, I am, <laughs> my, it, it, it does skip a generation. I, I think we're more like our grandparents in some level. Mm -hmm. So we're live on Facebook, but the delay is different. So we're both going to jump on Facebook after this is done. And we're going to answer any questions that are there. And if you want to post any of your links, and your grandma's skincare line or anything, please put it in the comments. Okay. And and how people could reach you and reach out to you. Okay. And if you're not in our Facebook group, please come and join up to and hairstyle education group because we got lots of great people like Mary here. And um, I think we're done, Mary. Is there anything else? No, I think um, we're all set. And thank you so much for the opportunity, Gretchen. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I've been so excited. 
All right, guys, I'm going to say goodbye and say goodbye to Mary. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you later. All right, where are we?